Okay, so now, now that we've created an array in the back end um, for Exchange uh, within DNS and on the network load balancer, we need to let Exchange know that an array has been created. So I opened up the uh, Exchange Management Shell EMS. Um, and within here, you need to um, you need to paste the command. So the command we need to type in is uh, new client array name, and the name is the cast array. And this is your first default site name, which is from DNS, and then the uh, fully qualified domain name, and that's the name that we had given our array, if you remember. Hit enter and let it do its thing. Okay, so now Exchange knows that there is a an array that's been created called cast array. Uh, because we have not installed the mailbox role yet, so the next command that we need to run is um, associate uh, the mailbox database with this cast array so um, so the mailbox is no when people connect when somebody comes to cast array it knows that okay here is the mailbox that I need to go to um, to retrieve this person's mail uh, that portion is that's another command that we need to run and um, and so that will be run um, uh, just as soon as the mailbox server role is installed and so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is switch over to the uh, switch over to the um, other part of the uh, video which is the installation of the mailbox server and then we'll continue from there once that is installed then I'll come back here and we'll point this gas array to um, that mailbox All right, so welcome back. Um, so now that all these exchange servers are installed, before we proceed, we want to make sure that the CAS array is working and that the mailboxes are responding to the uh, proper CAS array instead of the um, server name. So what you want to do is pull up the Exchange Management Council and in there paste the command get dash mailbox database dash server and then the server name and see what it responds to if it responds to uh, the cast array then it's working fine as it did here as you noticed it responded to exchange array dot how I think dot local instead of exch dot uh, dash zero three now and we can do the same thing and check the other and that mailbox is also responding to uh, exchange array dot how I think dot local so we have these two mailbox servers with two different databases responding to instead of responding to the exchange I'm sorry, it's responding to the server name, it's responding to the array that we had created earlier, if you remember 
um, here is where we had created this array. So it's responding. That's perfect. So now I bring up the management console. Under server configuration and our mailboxes, as you can see, we have exchange three and four with strictly mailbox roles. And then under client and hub, we have exchange one and two acting as the client and hub transport servers and three and four acting as mailboxes. Now that the mailboxes are set up, um, so we, we've we done two uh, aspects so far, right? We've done the um, front end, quote unquote, you know, the front end servers, which are the CAS array and hub transport and the back end server, which is a database. And so now we've done the redundancy for the front end server, which is the CAS array now we need to do the redundancy for the backend server which are which is the DAG the database availability group so let's go ahead and take a look at that um, and as to how that is created okay so now what we need to do is create a data <coughs> database availability group and so under organization configuration under mailboxes um, you'll see that the, the, these are the two servers that we have with um, different databases and right now uh, they're both mounted on their own respective server and if you click on database availability group right now we have nothing here and so we need to create a database um, availability group by clicking new database availability and that's gonna force the wizard to come up now here is asking for a name that we need to get uh, assigned so we can call it something simple um, here is asking us that we need a witness server and a witness directory um, so here um, what this means is that the you can't have a you can't have the uh, within the within the um, database availability group you can't have uh, the hub transport server now you can have all three roles assigned on a on a machine you can have the uh, the database I'm sorry you can have the mailbox the cast array the cast array um, the cast uh, role and the hub transport role all on one server but the file witness um, has to be a different server out of that out of the mix so it could at that point you can create a, a share on um, an active directory or another member server in your organization which doesn't have um, uh, any of these roles installed and you can point that to as the witness directory and basically what witness directory do does is that if a server goes down um, if there's a say network glitch and the DAG thinks a server went down but in reality it didn't then it's going to promote the other database um, mailbox database as the primary copy and that's going to cause a lot of issues and confusion so uh, in order to prevent that you need a uh, basically a, a third a referee basically that sits out there that says now wait a minute um, I see that the other server is not down and it must have been a glitch and it still is retaining the primary copy so no you can't have the it basically tells the other server no you can't have the primary copy the other server is still up so it's a basically a median middle which you need and so in our case um, if these servers had all three roles installed then I would have created a witness directory basically all it is is a shared directory on the on any other server in our case it would have been a domain controller uh, shared it and I would have pointed it here but we're lucky in a sense that our scenario is a little different we have the client access and the hub transport roles on different servers and the mailbox on a different so it's gonna automatically then go ahead and choose a sometime it does sometime it doesn't uh, but we can use one of those other servers as the um, witness so let's see if it automatically finds it for us if not we may have to choose it so we'll hit next, uh, new 
it's going through right now it's uh, trying to create a DAG at least the um, the group okay finish and as you see here EXCH-01 so it automatically chose one of the hub transport servers for us in this case it's EXCH-01 and as you can see it created a share called DAG file share witness uh, so it does that automatically for you which is pretty cool and now uh, we don't have any network so that's only because we have to add uh, 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 we have to add member servers in here now um, so yeah this process is pretty cool okay so we're gonna right click on our DAG and say manage database availability group membership and here we're gonna click on add and we're going to add the two mailbox servers. We're going to hit manage. And it's going to go through and install um, the servers within the group and set up all the uh, replication and uh, the subnet and interfaces and all that information. It's, it's doing everything right now here. Okay, so it completed. We got a little warning, but that's all right. So we're gonna hit finish. And as you can see right here, um, it created the uh, replication, the subnet, and the interface information. And so we can click on them and see, okay, this is server one, this is server two, this is the um, subnet that we're in right now. And so at this point, the servers are all part of a DAG. Um, but the mailbox databases are uh, are still not um, added to it or shared in in a uh, in any way. We just created a group and added the servers into it. All right. To uh, add the databases, what we need to do is go back to the database management. Say that um, Exchange Three is mailbox is your primary mailbox and all the mailboxes are on it and you want to make sure there's a redundant copy of it so what you need to do is now that we've added the servers to the database group we need to add the mailbox so you're going to right click on the mailbox and say add mailbox database copy and that's going to bring up the wizard and here you need to click on browse and you need to choose the other server here automatically we have the other mailbox server so it's going to that's the only one we have it's going to pick that you can see this net group that we created we're going to click ok now here it says activation preference number is set to two well that's because if you have multiple copies of the same database um, you need to know which one is the primary one which one is the secondary one so obviously uh, the one on exchange three is number one and so if that one fails it's going to go to the secondary one and choose a number two copy and if we had other servers then this will be three four and so on and so forth so we do this we click on add okay so it's finished we're gonna click finish and bam there you go so now we have this database and you can see that um, right now it's loaded on the exchange three mailbox and it's set to active and it's mounted and we have a copy of it now loaded on exchange number four mailbox and it's set to is it active no but the status is healthy so we know that the server is up so if if this if this server goes down this will automatically switch switch over and set this to active then uh, okay at this point we have created a successful database availability group with redundant servers, mailboxes, and on top of that, we have created um, a, a CAS array with redundant servers. And so, if one server goes down, we have the other servers take over. And now, to test this, uh, what we could do is, um, and to make sure that the database is functioning fine, I'm going to come here. Uh, under mailbox and I'm going to go ahead and create a test user and we're going to log on to OWA and make sure that it's going to the right mailbox 
So what we, we need to do is you're going to right click this and I'm going to say new mailbox. And I'm going to hit next. I'm going to create a new user and I'm going to call this first test. First dash test. Type in the password. Hit next. And here, if we had multiple databases, we need to know what database it's going to. So in our case, we have multiple mailboxes. Specify. And I want to make sure that it gets on the third, on our primary one, the one that we're testing with. Don't create an archive, new, and it's going to go through and create our user for us. All right, our user is now created, called first test. So um, what I need to do now is test the account, make sure it's working. So for that, well, I'm going to jump onto the other server and. Uh, we're going to test OWA and we're going to test all the functionality because at this point the internal uh, flow of the email should be working. We're not going to send an email but we want to make sure that at least the connectivity is fine, OWA is working, um, we know the, data, the DAG is working, we want to test to make sure that the CAS array is working also. Okay, so I brought up the, serve, the other server, I'm going to go ahead and log into it. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to connect to the um, the cast array that I created. So which was so we're going to try exch array dot how I think that local and OWA. So far so good. That's a good sign. It's still, the reason we're getting the certificate error is because obviously we haven't created a certificate, um, and that's a different story. That's a you know that's a whole separate. Uh, walk through which I'm not going to go through but uh, at, once, at, at some other point I'm going to create a video on that yes but at this point um, there is already a built-in self-signed certificate um, and so that's good enough for us we're going to click on continue and oh look it's off that's a good sign so we're going to say we're going to log in with our um, new user Sure it's working. Sign in. The first time logging in it tells us to set up our date and our language. We're good. Click OK, and voila! It's good. We know that the CAS array uh, pointed us to the right mailbox, and lo and behold, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have a successful creation of a, an exchange environment. All the intricacies are uh, working together. We have multiple servers in multiple arrays and multiple redundancy with high availability and so on and so forth. So everything that you can think of from redundancy perspective, we have achieved it here. Um, and so now, you know, internally you can go ahead and send uh, and receive emails. Now in the next portion, I'll show you how to set your connectors, your um, internal and your external connectors, so you can actually send emails to the outside world and receive emails, and then that would be the final video, and then we'll wrap it up.